Good morning, Taste Buds. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. Are you a junk food junkie? If so, stay where you are for some recipes that turn junk food into good food, but still with just a hint of junk, right now on SoFlo Taste. Chef Michelle Bernstein and welcome to my home here in Goya Kitchen at JA World in Coconut Creek. What's your favorite junk food? Come on, we all have them. Chips? Donuts? Do your fingers turn orange from Cheetos? Well today I thought it would be fun to give you some recipes for junk food that's not so junky. So let's get cooking. So most people don't know this, actually almost nobody knows this other than I think my husband and my son. My favorite and I mean, this makes my knees weak, barbecue potato chips. So one of the greatest Spanish chefs of all time, Ferran Adria, he created a tortilla española, a Spanish tortilla, out of plain potato chips. And usually you would use sauteed potatoes for that dish, and it's extremely Spanish and very traditional. So when he went ahead and did something so crazy as that, the whole world looked and paid attention. So I thought I would try it with barbecue potato chips and do it my own way. He didn't add onions like I love. What I did ahead, because it takes some time, is I just cooked some onions until they became meltingly soft and beautiful. They have the tiniest bit of color, but not much. And I'm just gonna strain them because this beautiful oil will be the oil to cook the tortilla. Because why would we lose all this gorgeous, oniony, delicious oil? All right, so let's start over. I'm gonna heat up a nonstick pan, and I'm gonna go small with this one. You can make it bigger with a larger nonstick, of course, but I don't know, I thought I'd make a bit of a smaller tortilla. So I'm just draining the oil from the onions, and I'm putting the onions in here, and I'm putting the oil back in the pan. All right, to these onions, let's go ahead and add some eggs. I'm going to go for eight of them. Always crack your eggs on your table or your cutting board, never on the side of the bowl. Crack them on the side of the bowl, you know what's going to happen. You're going to get some eggshell in your eggs. Let's go ahead and mix that together until that is homogeneous. So normally, I like my tortilla española to have even more potato than egg. So believe it or not, this is probably about six cups of chips because I think I already ate two cups. So you can go anywhere from six to eight cups. All right, once this is all combined, let's go ahead and add the chips to that. And let's get them really nice and softened. I'm trying to soften them without actually breaking them down too small. And I'm not really sure what's gonna fit into my saute pan, but I have a funny feeling all this will. An eight inch saute pan can take more than you think it can. All right, should we do this together? I say we do. I'm just gonna pour it in. Push it down and lower the heat. This is crazy. <laughs> Believe it or not, the egg is taking on a bit of the smell of the barbecue chip and it smells really, really good. So to make tortilla, you constantly want to lift up the side and push down so that the raw egg comes down to the hot oil that gathers towards you. And then just keep going and sliding it around and allowing the egg, the raw egg, the liquid, to come down again. Shake it constantly. Don't walk away from this because tortillas need a bit of love and a bit of attention.
keep sliding it towards you and keep working that raw liquid until you don't really see much more of it. Let's see. Oh, there. I can show you how to do it this way. You see all that raw liquid egg? So that's going that way. And that way it makes sure that it's going to cook on all sides, all over. All right, now I'm going to slide the tortilla onto a plate like so. And then we're going to take the tortilla and put it back into the pan. Keep using your spatula to shape it and tuck those little pieces under. And look how golden and beautiful the tortilla is. And this now is only about two minutes away from being completely done. It's really important that you shake it to form it. Constantly pushing down. Not breaking it though, making sure that you're just shaping it beautifully. Now you can, to be a little bit safer, if you wanted to go into the oven instead of flipping it over the way I did. And it's a lot safer. However, I must say, this is a lot more delicious. So the one thing I haven't done yet, I'm gonna go ahead and season the tortilla with a little bit of salt and pepper. And it's almost time to flip over. What you can do is just press on the center and if it moves like a waterbed, it's not totally done yet. But if it doesn't have a lot of movement but it's still beautifully tender, you're pretty much ready to go. Which I think I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a now clean plate and I'm gonna flip it over. And there you have it, a beautiful barbecue potato chip tortilla española. More of my treasured junk food recipes after the break. Come right back to So Close Taste. Stick around. Things are just heating up in the Goya kitchen at JA World on SoFlo Taste. You caught me. <laughs> Everybody likes junk food. Welcome back to the SoFlo Taste. As you know, I'm here at J World in Coconut Creek. I hope my mouth isn't orange. A great place for our kids and their education. Get to know them at jasouthflorida.org or call them at 954-979-7100. They always make us welcome. All right, so back to not so junky junk food. Just so you know, this whole bag of Cheetos made this not that big amount of crushed Cheetos. So we put Cheetos through a food processor because I've always wanted to see what it's like to crust things with Cheetos. They're really good in my mouth. They might as be good on a piece of chicken. So we've got some chicken thighs here that we cut to pretend that they were chicken tenders. You can do the same with chicken tenders or you can do the same thing with chicken breasts, really up to you. So here I've got some flour that we seasoned. We're gonna um, mix it in. There's garlic powder, onion powder, and cayenne pepper to give this a little more flavor. So let's go ahead and mix that into all-purpose flour. All right. Next, of course, is the egg wash, and then finally is the crushed Cheetos, which we're gonna add a little bit of cheese too. Now speaking of this chicken, by the way, I got this chicken from my buddies over at Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Um, they have every part of the chicken that's perfect for the grill and they always turn out beautifully tender and juicy. 
receive a discount when you purchase five pounds or more. Call them at 954-983-6831. Place an order. Go in the store, which I love to do to see everything. They're poultry experts, and they can get your order together and have you in and out super fast. They're at 4191 North State Road 7 in Hollywood, or you can go to see them online at DelawareChicken.com. Place an order, and make sure you tell them Chef Michelle sent you. All right. So we got cheesy Cheetos <laughs> with Parmesan, the egg and the flour. We're using these, what I call um, dark chicken tenders. Uh, we're gonna put them first in flour and then in egg wash. Remember, seasoned flour to give it a little bit more flavor. I mean, don't get me wrong, cheese Cheetos are delicious as they are, but once you add all these other ingredients, they start softening their flavor just a little bit. All right, so let's go into the egg wash. And I'm just using gloves so I don't become a big old mess. Make sure you get every corner covered with your egg. And then of course, press a little bit of Cheeto mixture into it. And it really adheres. I was kind of surprised. We tried one because I'd never done it before and it seemed like they became almost a little softened and moist and so I wanted to see what it was like after it crusted and it seemed to crust up beautifully and they're really pretty and bright orange all right a little bit more can you imagine if the kids opened up their lunch boxes and they had Cheeto crusted chicken oh <gasps> would you become a favorite in that house oh my goodness press that in so we have here a piece of parchment paper over a cookie sheet and I sprayed it a little because I didn't really know if this was going to stick or not. So I always say, when in doubt, spray. So we used a little cooking oil spray. Now we could have cooked this in a pan, but that would add just a lot more fat to this. And I figured we're already crusting with Cheeto. <laughs> I didn't want to add more to it. Okay, so I am going to go into the oven and let's see how these turn out. When you come back, I'm gonna try a recipe that I swore I never would. We are gonna make bread pudding out of Krispy Kreme donuts. So hurry up, you don't wanna miss it. Hi, I'm design expert, Elena Capra. Michelle will be right back. And don't forget to stay tuned for another episode of SoFlo Home Project following SoFlo Taste. I'll finish this recipe right after this. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste and our junk food, not so junky food episode. So the last recipe I wanted to make with you today is one I've been reading about for years and I didn't dare go near it because I was just afraid it was just too much. It was a lot and it's a Krispy Kreme bread pudding. But since we decided to make a show all about junk food and turning it into something maybe beautiful, hopefully, um, I couldn't resist. So let's just talk about the filling. We're gonna combine a lot of egg yolks and a couple of eggs with some cream. until this comes together. Now we're not gonna add any sugar. We're just going to add some condensed milk. Not all of it though, I think it's only about half a cup condensed milk. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and keep whisking. Then we're gonna take a lot of Krispy Kreme donuts that have been cut into sixes and dried out in a low oven until they feel like croutons or even drier than a crouton. Because whenever you make bread pudding, you always want the bread, or in this case the donut, to be really dry. That gives it more texture. And this is, by the way, a really large recipe. Okay. 
there we have it. Now go ahead and pour your custard over the dried donuts. And this recipe specifically is for a Krispy Kreme donut. So what you're gonna wanna do is every 15 to 20 minutes, you're gonna want to stir this around and you're gonna wait until this really soaks up as much as the custard as you can. The longer you wait, the better. So if you can go a whole hour, even an hour and 20 to 30, do it because it will make a better bread pudding. And that's really all bread puddings are like that. In fact, my original bread pudding recipe, I let you sit it overnight in a refrigerator because you really, I just want you to soak up all that good custard into your bread. Okay, then you're gonna take a buttered pan like this, um, and this is where you're gonna pour the custard and the bread all together, okay? Then you're gonna cook that covered in, over a bain-marie just like I did here. So we put hot water in this pan, covered it, and it came out of the oven just a couple minutes ago, and it only cooked for about 45 minutes. And this is what it looks like. So now I'm gonna go into a really hot oven, about 375, and let this get all caramelized, and let's see how it comes out. Now we don't need a bain marie anymore because that was the more delicate cooking. Let's go ahead and check in on our Cheetos. Oh, they're beautiful. Wow. These are just gorgeous. So it's interesting, the edges are just starting to caramelize, but the Cheetos stayed beautifully bright orange. And I can't wait to put all this together. So for this dish, we thought it would be fun to serve it with things that kids and adults alike love to dip their chicken tenders into. So here we have uh, a little bit of ranch dressing, a little bit of barbecue sauce to cover all bases, of course, because, you know, some of us kids like one or the other. So let's just serve our Cheeto chicken tenders. And these are fun, and I have to tell you, they smell like Cheetos. I even have orange fingers to prove it. And there you have it, our Cheeto chicken tenders with ranch dressing and barbecue sauce. Come right back, let's see how our bread pudding does in that oven. Come on back for the best part of this recipe, the tasting, when SoFlo Taste cooks on for a Saturday morning. back to SoFlo Taste and of course taking junk food and making something less junky with it. We have our Krispy Kreme donut bread pudding in the oven. I'm about to pull it out and of course because you know that's not enough it comes with a little coffee flavored whipped cream but we didn't add sugar to it so that's something. All right so let's see what this is all about. So the recipe called for a hot oven and then a broiler but honestly if you go high enough in your oven, you really don't need a broiler. It caramelizes beautifully. Ah. Hello. All right, so let's serve us a little piece of this, shall we? It's very hot, but looks very delicious. Ooh, and it's so creamy. All right. Shall I? Yeah, why not? All right, I'm just gonna taste a little bite. Not bad. And the craziest thing about it, it's actually not that sweet. I don't know how that's even possible, but it's not. 
Thank you so much for joining me today. As I often say, if you didn't come along with me on Soflo Taste, all I'm doing is making lunch for the crew. <laughs> Try these not so junky junk food recipes I've given you today. You just may trade the real junk food in for them. Next week, I've got one word for you. Cool, refreshing, vitalizing desserts. That's obviously more than one word, but those words describe the desserts I'll be making for you. So join me for the desserts of the dog days of summer next time on SoFlo Taste. Now let's check in with my friend, our friend, Elena Capra, host of SoFlo Home Project. Good morning, Elena. What are you doing next? Hi, Michelle. Good morning. So today we travel back in time to the beginning of Fort Lauderdale. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we tour the historic Stranahan House built in 1901. It's actually the city's oldest structure. Thank you, Elena. Stay tuned for the other half of the SoFlo Hour. So, Taste Buds, thanks for spending another morning with me. Please be smart, be safe, and be vaccinated, and I'll see you here next week. Goodbye and very good taste.